Welcome to AFC, where the best anglers in the world go head to head in some of the toughest and most pristine fishing locations around Australia. USA and Japan's best anglers will team up with Australian champions to chase brim, bass and iconic barramundi. Join us on the ultimate road trip and watch the world's best anglers fish the most stunning locations in Australia to win fishing's greatest prize. Folks, welcome to Series 10 of AFC. We're here at Gladstone for match number one. We have Team Hobie and Team Mercury hitting the water. They have four hours to catch their five biggest brim. Let's get them started. Competitors, your finish time is quarter past 11. Team Hobie, Team Mercury will start in three, two, one, go. With world-class anglers coming from the US and Japan to compete with Australia's finest, AFC is the pinnacle of fishing around the world. Just north of Australia's famous Fraser Coast lies Port Curtis, our Brim Arena, a massive shallow bay protected by facing island to the northeast. Many small islands inside the bay are surrounded by small coral reefs and home to many species of fish. Our quarry today is both yellowfin and pikey brim. Anglers will have to manage fast running tides, strong winds and rocky outcrops to triumph over these testing conditions. We're here with Team Hobie at their first stop of the morning. They're fishing a rocky location just near Corn Island. They're going to be getting their lines in the water first off. First cast, rock and roll. The main structure we looked for this morning were rocky points either on the islands or on the mainland with current hitting them. If you had the current in there, it was pushing bait in there, and there was more likelihood that there was going to be fish sitting off that. Do my fishies? Oh, that's a brim. <laughs> no, that bite. While the boys begin their session, let's get some background on the brim teams competing this year. Yep. Team Hobie oh. consists of Chris Hickson and rookie Shane Taylor. Oh. Chris is making his fourth AFC appearance and is currently third in the ABT rankings, while Shane is making his debut after winning the ABT Hobie Kayak Grand Final at Bem River in 2012. Team BCF is Steve Gill and Heath Blakey. Steve's ABT brim ranking of ninth means that he knows his way around tournament fishing. His teammate Heath won the ABT Bribey Island Grand Final in 2012. This rookie team is keen to do well and prove that they aren't here to make up the numbers. Team Mercury's Russell Babicule and Warren Carter are together again after two straight AFC wins at Foster last year. Russell won ABT Angler of the Year in 2012 and is currently the number one ranked ABT Angler. Warren Carter is a black brim specialist from Victoria and is the ABT Angler of the Year for 2013. They will be the ones to beat. Bombs away. We've just caught up with Team Mercury. Their first stop for the morning has been a 15 minute run from the start line. Conditions here today are very testing. We've got some bright skies, we've got a bit of cloud, and most importantly for the anglers, we've got a bit of wind blowing. It will put chop on the water and hopefully it will get the fish to bite. Get in there. Don't come back without something on you. 
Gladstone was a lot tougher than we expected. Unfortunately, the tides probably didn't coincide with the best fishing times for us. So we went straight out to a spot that looked good and had a lot of structure, but there wasn't a lot of water on it and wind and tides and getting snagged a lot. So it was tougher than we thought. Oh, that's all bad. Both snagged up. Most frustrating. Certainly looking for a lot more water to come up. That's a good start. <laughs> Just snap the tip. Oh. <laughs> As you can see from the country behind us, we have very rocky shore and we have undulating depth. The price you pay with fishing such rocky country is that you quite often snag up. And we've just seen the two boys both snag up at the same time. Russ, when he's trying to get the lure off, broke his rod. So it just shows you the frustration of tournament fishing. The fish we found were sort of tucking in under the coral. They weren't up feeding like we'd imagine they were. So we had to use deeper diving lures and try and get them to sort of bash into the coral and park it in their face and shake it a little bit. And uh, you just had to be in the strike zone to get the bites. Come on, bait. There it is. Oh! Don't need a net. We're an hour into the session and so far we have no fish in the well. However, I'm expecting the bite to get better the further we get into the session. This tide's coming in, the fish will move up onto the flats and they should start to bite. It's a nasty country. <laughs> Wind, this is horrendous. I don't think I've ever fished a venue with so much water movement. Yeah. I think our biggest tides back home would probably fall about a metre. So to come up here and have four metre tides, uh, it's pretty impressive. After probably the first hour of the session, we wanted to go exploring and look at a bit of other stuff that we hadn't seen, especially while that tide was still on low. We knew it wasn't going to be a great time to get bites, so it was best using it to look at other places and possibly stumble across something else. We started off getting some nice bites early, a lot of short hits though. We didn't end up hooking fish and getting them to the boat, which was a pity. The second spot we pulled up at, it looked Awesome, it was one of the best looking points that we'd been past the whole time we'd been here. After the tide stopped, we looked for the same things again. Points, current, bait. Rock and roll. Back in the game. There's gotta be one of those rocks there. Oh, yep. Yep. Damn yeah. No. Nah. We were chasing pikey brim on the structure that we were on. From what I've seen, they've got very similar feeding habits to the yellowfin. The same lures that we use for the yellowfin at home work quite well on the pikeys. Um, deep diving hard bodies, just chugging into the rocks, bouncing over it as much as you can. They sit in there out of the current, waiting for the food to go past, and hopefully they're sitting there when our lure goes past. Uh-oh. Rocks. Nasties. Oh, there it is. Quick. <laughs> oh, I can't believe I just got that thing out of there. That is awesome. I'm that stuck on these rocks, it's not funny. Go on. Hobie's early stop at Corn Island has really paid off. They've got one in the well, and it's looking good for the rest of the session. It is 29. Oh, oh, there we go. Hobie. One fish for 29 centimetres, 550 grams. Hmm, Mr. Hickson. Fishing in the AFC, it's definitely a challenge. The um, circumstances, long days, short fishing times, um, and quite often on arenas that otherwise you would never get to. It covers the whole country just about, and you get to visit places like Gladstone. 
Gladstone as a fishing destination itself is, um, it's got to be up there on my list of places that I'd like to come back to. Um, there's so many species, such a variety of places and structures to fish. There's a lot more water to explore and I'd love to come back here and spend a few days, if not a week, with someone that knows the place um, to fish it to its full potential. Starting in your artificial reef of hard bodies. Yep. You're more or less um, feeling your way across the bottom. Your bib will hit the rock and keep the trebles away, but it's very soft coral here, so it sort of it's digs in more. The, the hooks tend to bite on a lot more than just hard rock, so sometimes you just have to donate gear to find the fish. <laughs> You're on. <laughs> He's only just in. Hold on, mate. No, that's not good. No. Head start gone. 28-4. I'm still up on him. We're at the halfway mark of the session. Both teams are sitting on one fish each. We still have four more fish to get their limits. It's going to make for a very close match. Bit of water pushing off that there too. We're on nine o'clock now, isn't it? Yep. Is that a fish? Yep. It's not Very big. Little. Yeah, it's not big. Oh yeah, he's bigger than he'd be legal. The 24 fork. Yep, that's a better one. Oh, oh get out of there. Where you going? You. Yep. Well done, mate. Twenty-eight pork. Number three. No. Oh, no. I got three. What? <laughs> One point three. Things can change very quickly in tournament fishing, and that's exactly what we've just seen here. Team Mercury have put two fish in the well in quick succession. Team Hobie, they're just moving now. They now have a lot of work to do. We went for a look up the northeastern end of the system because they look really good and we figured that'd be the first place to get the current back at that time of the day. And that was our plan to just run and gun. We were just trying to find one of those spots where we could find a few fish, hopefully sitting on one point. We might be able to pull out three or four of them, fill our bag. Oh, oh you're on. A bit of something. Oh, oh is that a long time or something? Fish. Oh, there's oh. a fish. On like Donkey Kong. Ah. <laughs> it's a white thing. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah, that's a long time. time. There's a flathead. On fire. Working my way through the species. Yeah. You gotta get a flounder and a tailor now and a blackfish. And then you might get a brim. The Fraser Coast region is the gateway to the best and most diverse fishing on the east coast of Australia. The World Heritage listed Fraser Island and its surrounds have been the ultimate family holiday destination in Australia for years. Our host city of Gladstone sits 100 miles to the north of the Fraser Coast, on the southern tip of the Great Barrier Reef. Gladstone is a coastal town with two distinct personalities. At first glance, we see a busy port providing a link between Asia and Australia. Look again and you'll see a huge range of natural wonders, ready and waiting to be explored. The tropical islands of Heron and Lady Musgrove are must-visit places to experience the Great Barrier Reef. On the mainland, casual walkers or serious hikers can choose from hundreds of trails through spectacular mountain ranges. Its pristine beaches woo surfers with secluded breaks along the coast. If all this sounds too energetic, relax on the white sand beaches and just enjoy the sun. Gladstone's got it all. Fishing offshore 
you'll find marlin, mackerel and tuna. While on land, there's the iconic Bass to Barramundi Trail, which includes Gladstone and nearby Lake Kenya and the mighty Lake Awunga. After sort of mid-session, the tide started to lift and was pushing some fresh water up over those rocks and we we're hoping it pushes the bait in also and makes them sort of come out from under those rocks and get a lot more active and we just had to sort of pinpoint those little pockets. Oh, there you go. 23 and a half fork. That's another one. Oh, what? That's what happens when you find them. Mercury, four for four, 1.575. Oh, man, they're small. Uh, when we got that text message come through to let us know that they'd caught a couple of fish, they sort of come through pretty quickly, a couple of them. And we were starting to get behind the eight ball. It was a bit uh, disheartening, but we just sort of had to keep going with what we were doing. And um, we were pretty confident that we'd be able to get some fish. We're here with Team Hobie. They've recently moved from a calm spot on Curtis Island to a quite windblown point on Turtle Island. Oh, there's a whole heap of current on this one, eh? Like, it's mayhem. The blackout is only 10 minutes away and things are getting very tense. These guys have a lot of ground to make up if they want to get back in this match. Oh, there's another text. Oh, we're getting our asses handed to us. Oh, I don't even want to look at that. Big one? Have no electric motor. What? We knew the last hour of that session was going to be the most critical, and unfortunately, we lost full electric power with an hour and a half to go. Let's kick them all down. The wind was actually blowing the opposite way to the current, so that helped us a little bit. We could nose into the rocks, and the wind would sort of keep us out off the rocks, but we could still fish the current coming towards us. So uh, it was very frustrating fishing, but uh, extra rewarding once we got them. There's one. Come on. Oh! That's his mate. Oh, here we go. Oh, 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 what the? There we go. You. That's it. Well done, mate. Yep. Yep. Oh, bugger. This is what we've been waiting for all day. That water's just starting to push up. 25 and a half for the fork. It's number five. It's been a very frustrating day, but. 15 minutes, anything can happen. <laughs> Everybody thinks that we spend endless hours out practicing. We really don't. Majority of us brim guys, we're not just brim people, and everyone forgets that we just love fishing. We go and chase all sorts of fish, so any spare chances that we don't have comps, we generally go and chase other species. My passion for fishing has been Oh, ever since I was three or four, my nan lived on the water uh, down the central coast and I used to always wander out at the front and just catch little things. It didn't matter how big they were as long as you were catching something and then eventually it transferred over to lure fishing and ever since it's grown and gone into competitive fishing and I'm a competitor. I love the, uh, the competition between not only you and the fish but you and 20 or 30 other people on the water so it's, it's a... Uh, it's a great achievement when you can outsmart both of them and, and you get a win. BCF and ASC are giving you and a friend the chance to win the ultimate fishing road trip. The winners will retrace the journey AFC anglers took in Series 10. Chasing Brim in Gladstone, Bass in Bundaberg and Barra in Mackay. You'll fish for four hours at each location. How will you measure up against the AFC pros? To enter, visit bcf.com.au or head into a BCF store for further information and Australia's best range of fishing gear. The areas we're fishing are quite small. The points that the current hits on, um, there's only sort of 40, 50 metres of bank that you really want to concentrate on. There's a lot of wind and a lot of tide in this place, so it makes it hard to hold on the area and target the casts into where you want them. It's not happening, I don't know. No, we're doing something wrong. Yeah. 
Yeah, there was a little bit of rod rage out there today. It was a challenging day. The wind was blowing, the tide was pumping along. To get into where the fish was was a challenge in itself and then getting them out and getting your lures through that without getting caught up and making a mess of yourself. Yeah, it started to get frustrating. The first couple of hours wasn't too bad, but when things just weren't getting better and we weren't catching fish, yeah, it gets to you after a while. It's like Mission Impossible at the moment. Take your time with him. Yeah. You'll upgrade. It's another fish. It's an upgrade. Yep. One cast. One good one. Like that. That's it, guys. That's the end of the session. Well done, mate. <laughs> Anglers, you had a really hard time out there today. The tides weren't ideal, we had a lot of wind. Nonetheless, Team Hobie, you had a tough day out there today, catching only one fish at 29 centimetre with an estimated weight of 550 grams. Its real weight was 670 grams. In contrast, Team Mercury, you had a red hot day out there today, landing six fish. The estimated weight for the five best was 2.2 kilos. Its real weight was 2.16, which makes you our winners for match one of AFC. Well yeah, done, no, guys. Good work, buddy. And, uh, they score 10 cool. points for the win. Team Hobie, they pick up three points. Two of those, of course, being for the big broom for this event. And of course, don't forget to come back for our next match. We have Team Mercury doing battle with Team BCF. Make sure you tune in for that. The big brim in the first match we caught was a 670 gram pikey brim. It's an OSP dunk hard bodied lure cast into a rocky point with a lot of current. The fish actually bricked us in the rocks, and the reason we could get that out was a 5 to 12 pound dollar black label rod and a 2500 reel cast on 10 pound braid and 10 pound dollar leader. <laughs> <laughs>